Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. Today we're going to have a look at how we got here and finish it off hopefully. So, I had hoped to be showing you what used to be here and taking you through the process of getting to this point. But unfortunately my SD card and my camera took a bit of a crap on me and the footage is gone. So you'll just have to live with me explaining it. So basically this is my office. You'll remember this being Office 2.0 if you like. I've got my salt water tank over here. I've got my little shrimp tank over there. And this was a breeding setup for a couple of my discus. My original plan was that this was going to be something that, this is my office as well, so I'll work from here. This was going to be something that I'd hopefully capture on film because I'm in here all the time. But it seemed to be working against me that I'm in here all the time and it was putting them off. And they were laying egg regularly, but ultimately eating them as well. Um, so if you've joined me on any of my live streams, um, you'll know we've discussed this and, and just called time on it. It's time to put them back downstairs into the fish room. Uh, so they're in there now, they're happy as Larry, eating away. Um, and I'm going to concentrate on making this a bit of a nicer tank. So I wanted something a bit prettier. Um, that I'm in here all the time. I want to have something nice to look at. Uh, again, on my live stream we discussed what was going to go in here. Because I'm not 100% sure what I want in there yet. So we've kind of come down to killifish or some kind of dwarf puffer. So pea puffers or maybe figure eight puffers or green spot puffers or something along those lines because I'm getting into the puffers. Yeah, they're just so interactive all the time that that's what I wanted to do. So I want to make today's video just about escaping this. So I spent a good couple of hours watching all George Farmer's how to basics aquascaping videos um, and this is what I've come up with basically. So what we've got is a hardscape at the moment. I took out, you remember if you've been here before, this was just a bare tank for the discus breeding. So emptied it out, left it dry for a week. Um, I filled it with, uh, this is play sand down at the bottom. We've got some, I'm not entirely sure what the stone is because it's so long ago that I bought it. Uh, it could be cereal, cereal stone or something along those lines. And a few pieces of finger wood, finger roots in there. So I played around for a long time and talked a load of nonsense into the camera um, about how to come up with this, which is obviously now lost. But this is kind of what I've settled on. I'm, I'm looking out for another stone of this type so as I can go out and um, extend this side a little bit more. I want a larger stone in there, but I just can't find one at the moment. And as the title of the video will say, I'm trying to do this on a budget. So I'm trying not to spend any money. So I'm reusing things that I've got already uh, kicking around and trying to get something that actually looks half decent without having to spend the fortune. Because if you read some of the uh, the articles or watch some of the videos on there, it all adds up so quickly. So you get a planting substrate and then you top it off with something else. Then you buy your hardscape and your wood. And yes, it might only be 10 or 15 pounds here or there, but when you add all that up, we're, we're talking a small fortune. So the tank um, was a, a bargain tank that I got off a Facebook group, a local Facebook group, six months to a year ago. Uh, I think it cost ten pounds. It's two foot by one foot by one and a half foot. Uh, the stone I got years and years ago. You'll have seen it in previous videos where I've used it in the past. Uh, and the wood again, I got that when I got my big discus display tank so this is what's left over from that so I've not spent a penny so far obviously they cost money in the first uh, round of buying them but I've not spent a penny to get to this point um, I'm reusing one of my old Alpon Solutions EF1000 filters I think it is um, that may seem like overkill for a tank this size but these are so crappy the flow rate is nowhere near that so I'm sure it will be fine. So for frustration we've got, uh, this is actually it's an all pond solution EF1000. Um, in other countries they're called different things, there's kind of generic sun sun filter essentially. 
I'm not a huge fan other than the fact that it was dirt cheap. This was one of the first canister filters I ever got. Um, it worked perfectly fine, it's just nowhere near the rating that it gives you on the tin. Um, and it's quite inefficient to run power wise as well. I did a, a video on that a while back. But it'll suit the purpose. So in this particular model you get three baskets. I've gone for in the first basket some sponge and filter floss on top. So the way the flow goes is the water comes in through the top obviously, goes straight down to the bottom and then rises back up. So you want your mechanical filtration at the bottom to catch the majority of the crud and then to go through the bio filtration. In this basket we're using Hello. Hello. <laughs> we're using um Alpha Grog, ceramic rings, that kind of stuff which I've taken out of an established filter so as it's seeded. I will probably be swapping it over for some bio home at some point. Uh, but we'll cover that in another video. Bye. That was my daughter just poking in to say hello. So that covers filtration. That gets us to a point where the tank itself is up and running and everyone's happy. Um, no inhabitants yet, no plants. Plants come next. Right, had 10 minutes of pumping and priming. So that button there is to prime it. So you meant to suck the water in, but you'll notice that I filled it up beforehand because it doesn't really work very well. Just like most of the things with this filter, they're a bit crappy. So the handles tend to break off. I think I've replaced all the handles at least once. One of them's still a bit broken. Uh, it took about 10 minutes before it finally got quiet. Um, don't know how well that's picked up on the camera, but it's not silent, um, but it's not bad. It's working, it's cycling the water, it's doing what it needs to do. Um, obviously it's an old filter. I've not used it in a while, so I don't know how long I'll keep it. Might swap it for a simple. I don't want anything inside. I'm trying to keep it as clear as possible inside and have maybe I'll have a hang on back and put it on the side or something along those lines. But that's pretty much it. So obviously I talked about all these things that I had spare. So if you don't have them spare, then you're going to be looking for some kind of equivalent. And the best place to go is if you've got a local river, a, a pond, a lake, something along those lines. Go around, have a scavenge, pick up some things, you'll find some interesting stones, interesting rocks, twigs, branches, all that kind of stuff. You're kind of guaranteed that if you find it in water that it will be suitable for your fish tank. Give it a clean, um, a good scrub, a good rinse, a good soak in hot water. Don't boil rocks as some people seem insistent on doing. Um, but you can usually find some substrate, some gravel, whatever it might be. Um, some mud, some sand from a riverbed, some stones, and some rocks. And I'd be perfectly happy to leave it with that. I just happen to have a tank full of plants, so I can think about planting this. Um, but that looks quite good to me. Um, so yeah, I'm happy with that. But let's go downstairs and see what we can do plants-wise and get some plants, bring them up, stick them in. Obviously this is an inert substrate. So I'm hoping that I've got some root tabs, so fertilizer tabs, they're little tablets. You put them under the, the soil or under the sand and they slowly release the fertilizers so as the plants don't just die off. So any plants which feed from the roots predominantly, I'm going to need to put in something like that. Otherwise they'll just die because it's brand new sand. It's not got any poop in it. But I can put in things like java ferns or things which feed mostly from the water column. So let's go and see what we've got. Okay, so we're down in the fish room. Um, obviously, I've got this tank here, which is my planted tank. Uh, I'm trying to grow plants in here to propagate them and then sell them, make some money, hopefully feed some fish that way. Um, I managed to find a couple of root tabs, so I'm thinking I'll probably go with some of the valves. So I've got some valves down here, these are the they're twisted valves, or these might be the normal ones. Um, but I thought they'd look good coming through behind the rocks. Uh, the swords and things like that, which I'm not sure about. I've got some water sprite here, which you probably do pretty well in there, actually, because that does take quite a lot out of the water column rather than the soil. Um, and these lily-type plants, which I can never remember the name of. 
So I'm wondering, I might try a little bit of water spray, some of the vials, and maybe some of the crypts, because I think they'll look good. And I might go for a little bit of the uh, Junkus Rippins, which I use in my big display tank. And obviously in some of these other tanks, I have some, you can't see that, some Java Fern. And Java Fern is really good because it doesn't like to be planted, so that should do pretty well. I've also got some Java Moss down here. Tons and tons and tons of it, so if I want to put some moss on, wedged in some rocks and some around some of the wood, that would probably look quite good as well. So I'll pick up a couple of these things. Um, the, some of these Java fairs look a bit tatty actually, so you shall see. Right, I'll, I'll get a bucket out and we'll collect some stuff. So for the scaping element of this, um, I mentioned earlier I looked at a load of George Farmer videos and I would encourage you to go and check him out. Um, it was actually on the Aquarium Gardens website, uh, channel rather. Um, they've got a few series on how to aquascape and things like that. So I've probably broken all the rules, um, but essentially I was trying to get some kind of balance in the tank. Um, so they say things like avoid just putting everything right in the middle of the tank. Unless that's specifically what you're going for. Um, find the interesting parts of the rock and face them towards where you're going to be viewing it from. Try and get a bit of a flow so all the rocks leaning in the right, the same direction or some kind of uniform towards where they're going. So you'll see here the rocks on the left hand side are kind of leaning towards the right. And then I've got a couple of pieces of wood behind them which are also extending there. Uh, roots out towards the right and then on the other side got the opposite so it's kind of drawing the attention from one to the other um, ultimately I normally go for plonk everything in the tank and fiddle around with it until it looks half decent then give up and call it a day and uh, so I've got a little bit more thought into it and I, had, I did have a bit of a plan at least um, not sure whether I'm completely happy with it. I mentioned earlier that I want to get a, another larger rock for that bit on the left hand side. But we'll see. I'm, I'm fairly happy with it. Um, this is me just deciding whether or not there's too much um, algae on that bit of crypt. But yeah, that, as always, let me know in the comments what you lot think. Um, does it look half decent? Have I done something completely stupid? Let's have a look and see. So that's it for stage one. Next thing to do is get some fish in there, I guess. Um, so I'm fairly happy with that. I've managed to not spend a penny to get to this stage. As I said before, you might have to do some extra work and go out and forage and find things. But these are all plants that I've grown myself. I've taken cuttings from various things. These are all rocks that I already had, that I had in other tanks and I've just moved them. Um, the sand I already had, but even if I had to buy that, it's dirt cheap. Um, I have made the crucial key of not actually, the crucial mistake of not actually putting in the root tabs. Um, so I, I need to do that. But I think for now, I've got to be pretty happy with that. It looks okay. I've managed to save the best of the Java fern that I had. Um, so we've got a little bit of water sprite over in this corner, a little bit of Java fern, more Java fern. I had one huge big crypt which I've cut up and split uh, into, oh, just onto this side actually. Some of the uh, junkish ripens down here and some of the vials at the back, which is a bit hidden at the moment, but hopefully if it does pick up, that'll take off and We'll see them going, forming a green wall across the back, hopefully, eventually. So, that's what I've got for the tank. The next question is, what do I put in it? So, I've been thinking about some kind of puffer fish. Now, obviously, if I go for anything that's not a true freshwater puffer, the fact that it's planted isn't going to do very well, because eventually we'll have to convert them to brackish or go on marine and that'll kill off the plants. Killifish, I still like the idea. Um, when I was at the pet shop last time, I was thinking about some kind of nano fish, even like the white cloud 
or the golden white cloud the minnows um, mountain minnows or some other kind of galaxy rasbor or some kind of tiny little fish that's very colourful and just would look good in a tank this size so I'll throw it out there and I'm not going to buy anything just yet I'll concentrate on getting these plants established for the time being um, I say that, I'll probably go out tomorrow and buy something so if you see this comment quickly let me know what you think would work in a tank that is set up like this what would you like to see in here um, I can't guarantee that I'll definitely go for what you suggest but you never know, I'm always open to ideas so that's me, thanks very much for joining me, what do you think? I think it looks fine um, lots more practice needed shout out to George Farmer, thank you very much for all those how to videos and I'm sorry I obviously didn't pay enough attention um, as as I said earlier, let me know in the comments what you think I should stick in there um, join me on the live stream, I'm probably going to be doing Friday night live streams unless I get a better offer um, we can talk a bit about it then if I haven't already filled it by then um, all the usual stuff, click the like button, hit the subscribe button, share it where you can, all that kind of jazz and I'll see you next time. See ya!